we've left a rogue parsnip behind. <laughs> and of course, the one thing that parsnips do do at this time of the year is to start to regrow so that they can rise to flower. And I don't want to disturb the onions. Thankfully, oh, that's a baby it one. was only a baby <laughs> one, Mrs W. That's obviously why we missed it. <laughs> and the potatoes that we planted Ooh, a few nice videos feeling. back, they're through. These are the Charlotte, these are. Yeah. The actual covers are on there because we do like to let the chickens out. And as you rightly pointed out, Belinda, they do like to eat the slugs too. So... So they can't do the damage around the plants, that's why they're covered. But today's video is a sewing day. We need to do our first sewings for the month of April. And of course, that also means a new compost variety. Hello and welcome back to our new dig Norfolk Garden. I had to come inside the polytunnel because the wind is getting ever stronger and it's actually beginning to rain now. And what I did just want to say is a really big thank you to you all following all your lovely comments after our last video all about those slimy slugs. <laughs> and it's great that some of you have taken some of the things that we talked about and are going to use those. But also, a lot of you had your own ways that you deal with slug and snail problems. In fact, we got so many of those, we're actually going to try some of those we during the year, are. aren't we? We and certainly then, are. When we get to this time next year, we can make a whole new video yeah. about restoring the balance between our plants and the slugs. Were there nine tips in the last video? We can probably get up to 20 next April. Let's hope so. <laughs> You're never too old to learn, is what my dad used to say. <laughs> He's right. He's right. The other thing is, is that that video has performed really, really well. And we do, I probably don't say it enough, but we really do appreciate it. Every comment that you leave and for every thumbs up that you give us. Because every time you guys do that, YouTube thinks the video is actually really popular. And I think at this moment of recording, the video is approaching sort of 4,500 views. Wow. Which is very good for us. <laughs> that's, that's the first for us. <laughs> 1,200 views, yes. And to put it into context, our, our biggest view or our largest viewed video so far is how to prune summer fruiting raspberries. And we filmed that two years ago and that's now on 7,200 and something views. So it's been viewed quite a lot of times over the last two years. Even though initially, it probably only had about 200 people look at yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. So it shows you how well that, that slug video did at four and a half thousand views and it's not stopped yet. It just goes to prove how many people have trouble with slugs and snails. <laughs> but also it's really valuable too because we offer our ex experience that we've gathered over the years but there's much more out there, much more resources that you can tap into and clearly there's some quite experienced gardeners that watch our channel and every time you leave a comment in there about something other people can read that and they can extract the information that they need and where they can use it. It is mid-April, it's also a new month so that means that we have a new compost and this month 
we should be sowing everything into Dalefoot compost. And just as a reminder to you, this video is not sponsored. It's not a paid promotion. We're just trying these different peat-free composts to see how well they do. And I have to say, the ones we've tried so far, they've done really well. We haven't really had a problem with any of them. But this is the last one that we should be trying. Now, Dalefoot are based up in Cumbria, and they're a bit unique to any of the other composts because they use sheep's wool. And that sheep's wool actually helps retain the moisture when you water it. They also use bracken in it and have added comfrey to their compost so that your plants are going to be well fed. Now they don't do a multi-purpose version, they do a compost for seeds. They also, Mrs W, if you turn around, mm -hmm. do a compost for vegetables and salads. And it claims on there that it will feed naturally for 12 months. That's more for like vegetable plot raised beds and containers, it says. Yes, and that's what we shall be using it in ourselves. Now once the seeds have germinated, we also have the wool compost for potting. So whatever is potted on this month will be potted on into this compost. The other thing that I want to say about it is that it is soil association approved for organic growers. Now I've pre-filled my module tray with the Dalefoot compost. And the first thing that I want to sow is our sweet corn. Now we're growing two varieties. Swift, we've grown for some time. It's a lovely sweet corn and that matures in September. Last year, if you were a follower of our channel, you'll know that I said that I found some plants in a garden centre. And rather than going out and buy the seed, we thought we'd just plant them in the ground and see what they do. And it was called Early Bird. And that really was lovely, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And this matures in August and through into September. So now, we have two varieties and we can extend that window of harvest. Now, although I'm not actually a lover of sweet corn, I have to say, but the rest of the family is, and especially our grandchildren. And as we see them quite often, that will provide many meals for them while they're staying over with Nanny and Grandad. <laughs> I'm just going to put some indentations in here, round about half an inch deep. And we shall start with the early bird. Because the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> and we're going to put two seeds per station. and then we shall thin to the strongest seedling. And April is a good time to sow your sweet corn. Sweet corn can't go into the plots until the danger of all frost has passed. So there really isn't much point in getting an early start on them because all you're going to be doing is potting them on because they grow quite large 
quite quickly. Then we should put some vermiculite over the top. So put the labels in there so that we know which variety is which. And last year Mrs W made her sweet corn relish and very lovely it is too. Even you like a little bit of that, don't you? Oh yes, oh yes. So you are wondering what else you can do with your sweet corn, especially if we, we have a really good crop this year. I'll leave a link down in the description. So do go and have a look at that video. It's a really great recipe using your sweet corn. So next we want to be sowing our cucumbers. And these are cucumbers that will be grown under cover. So either in a greenhouse or in the polytunnel. We also grow an outdoor variety, market more. But like the sweet corn, they can't really go out into the garden until all danger of frost has passed. So again, little point in sowing them early because you'll just be potting them on and potting them on. It's like the sweet corn, they grow quite quickly. So for now, it's our old favourite Passandra. Now we've grown this for the probably the last four or five years now. Yeah, at we? least that, yeah. And when we talked about it last year, I know several of you went out and bought the seed and you really enjoyed that too. It suits myself and Mrs W because they're not the long cucumbers you normally see. Quite a bit shorter, they get about that long. But they are quite thick, aren't they? Yeah. Lovely tasting cucumber, but the most important thing is, you'll probably see on the packet there, that they are all female flowers. So you don't have to worry about the male flowers, because with traditional cucumbers that have male flowers, they can make the cucumbers taste bitter. So it's much less work to do with this particular variety. So there are the seeds. There is only four in the packet, but this particular variety, being an F1, is extremely prolific and you do get lots of cucumbers from them. Now some people say that you should sow these on this side because it helps with them not rotting. Mrs W is an advocate of that. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm not though. <laughs> In all honesty, I've sown them both ways, and I've had the same things happen. So I don't see where it makes any difference. <laughs> That's because I do as I was taught. <laughs> you like to push the boundaries. <laughs> I'll just get some vermiculite on there. So we'll label those up. And now there we're ready for a watering. Brilliant. Now the next thing I want to get underway, some red cabbage for Mrs W. This is a variety called Rodeo. And from a sowing now in April, we should see a harvest around about August, September time. And I'm going to sow one more lot next month, which should give us a harvest for September and November. And I'm sowing two seeds per station just to increase the chance of germination. And then we shall thin to the strongest seedling. And the only other thing I just wanted to say was is that off camera I have sown the next lot of brassicas for us, which will give us our greens for the month of August. And you can see just right by Mrs W, the ones that we sowed last month. Cauliflower not... skipper, cabbage providence, 
Calabrese Marathon and Kohlrabi Green Delicacy. And it's not going to be too long before they can go out into the plots. You can see they're already getting their second leaves. So now is the time, not for the Chelsea chop, Mrs W, <laughs> but the W chop. <laughs> and we'll thin them down to the, their strongest seedling. Yeah. It's time for us to... Hello, Mrs W's been busy. <laughs> I see you've put more strapping around the broad beans. I have, they were getting far too tall for the first layer. <laughs> so I've yeah, put another are, couple of layers. They? They're looking good plots now, aren't they? Lovely. Yeah, they really are looking great. Well, I've come outside now to actually sow our parsnips. It's mid-April. It's been quite cold up to now. Now that we are at mid-April, the soil temperatures are sort of there. And often, when it's very cold and very wet, like it was in March, you find that your parsnips often don't germinate. They can be tricky to germinate anyway, without those difficulties it will be because the seed has rotted in the ground and in some years of course it works others it doesn't but actually to make sure that you do always get the germination you want April is a good time to be sowing it I was looking on the back of our seed pack and it says sow them in February that's something I would never ever do I'm going to sow three seeds per station. And that's because, as I said earlier, parsnip seeds are renowned for troublesome germination. What you are going to do is to thin to the strongest seedling. And by doing it this way, you'll increase your chances of at least one germinating at every station. So if you are new to actually growing parsnip, when they do germinate they look like weeds. And if you've got a particularly weedy plot you'll be wondering which is the parsnip seedling and which is a weed seedling. So what a lot of gardeners do is, is that in the same row, they will sow radish. Now the radish will germinate far quicker than the parsnip. When your parsnips do germinate, because they're in that row, they are likely to be a parsnip and not a weed seedling. The parsnips are in the ground for a long time. It'll be November before we harvest these. Provided Mrs W doesn't get me to pull one up slightly earlier. <laughs> because she is partial to a parsnip. <laughs> Radish are normally ready to harvest eight to ten weeks. So you will have enjoyed a lovely crop of radish long before those parsnips need the room to actually grow to their eventual size. And like I said right at the beginning of the video, your comments are really important because they alert other growers as to what you're doing. So whether you live in the south of the UK, the north of the UK, if you live in Europe, we get viewers from all over the world, you guys over there in the USA, Canada, Australia, let us know when you are sowing your plants because then everybody else can read that and they'll get a good idea when they can sow their seeds. When you leave your comment, 
try to remember to say whereabouts in the world you are. And if you know it, put your garden zoom in there. We garden in zoom 9A. So anybody over the world that grows in that zoom, you can sow with the exact same time lines as we do. But there will be differences. Some will be, need to sow later, some will need to sow earlier. So yeah, be really good to see some comments in there with your garden zone, where you live and when you're sowing your seeds. Do have a great gardening week and we shall see you back in our Norfolk garden, hopefully on a sunny day. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs>